little intro for this section then where we're looking at sketching rational polynomial functions, things like these really. When we've done division on two polynomials we might end up with something like this. So there's a tool, a widget tool in the um, live worksheet at the bottom on the tool bar uh, to work out division of polynomials if you want to check uh, how to divide one polynomial by another uh, without having to do it by hand. So you've got examples like this. Typically this is the sort of areas we look at. We look at um, whether there's any asymptotes, uh, whether they're on the curve, and we'll look at those when we look at these examples. X gets to large values, be they, uh, both positive and negative. Also an easy value to get is when X is naught, you can put it in and see what happens to the Y value. And turning points. Now turning points is uh, unless it's asked for us explicitly in the question, generally when we do curve sketching we really want the nature or the essence of the curve. Turning points necessar aren't necessarily needed. So if it's too arduous a process or more trouble than it's worth then it's not really necessary to get the turning points unless they're fairly handy to get. So there's less emphasis on getting the actual coordinate for the turning point as long as we've got the characteristic shape or the essence of the curve when we sketch it. So let's have a look at a few of these things then first of all then. The curve y over x, that illustrates how to look at part 2 here and also part 1. Part 1 and 2 are mainly what we would use for curves like this. Um, so here we can get asymptote here. When we look at when x is naught, the denominator is 0. If we look at places where the denominator is 0 then we'll shoot off to infinity either side. So with the 1 over x, if you look at values here just above 0, say 0 0.1, then in your mind's eye you can look at 1 over 0 0.1, you get 10, which is up here. And if you do 0 0.01 in your mind's eye, you'll see that's 1 over 0 0.01, that's 100. So the closer you get to 0 from above, you can see that it's going to shoot off to infinity. Now if you look on the negative side, and that's a practical thing you can do, is put in little values in your mind's eye, or tap them in a the calculator, like if we put in minus 0 0.1, say for example, the answer will be negative, so we know it's down here, the value somewhere at minus 0.1, because it's a plus over a minus, which is a minus, so it's going to be a y value here. 1 over 0.1 again is 10, so it's minus 10, isn't it? And 1 over 0.01 with a minus is minus 100. So it comes down to here and shoots off to infinity. Of course, when x is 0, it's not defined. So this is an asymptote here and the function itself is not defined on x equals naught, and you can see how the curve tends to it. Now as x gets large is the other characteristic thing we would do with a, um, a curve that we'd want to ske sketch in this form. So as x gets to large, say 100, you'd get 1 over 100. Small positive. If it's 1000, it's 1 over 1000. So in your mind's eye, as x gets large positive, this fraction becomes increasingly small, but it remains positive. So it tends towards the x-axis, doesn't it? And for x large negative, we're going to get a number over a large negative, which will always be negative, so we're down here. And if we put minus 100 in then, we're going to get minus 100, minus 1,000. The fraction will be very small, 1,000th, but negative minus 1,000th. So it happens like that. So there's the curve then. There's nothing else characteristic that happens. So basically, we just got to join it up and draw a smooth curve. Now, I use a digital pen, so it's not easy for me in this section to draw these curves smoothly. So I would very much hope that when you're doing them, you'll get a, a lot better attempts than what I do. So there's the characteristic curve. We could look at um, turning points here, if we wished. So if we did that, we'd do y dashed. This is x to the minus 1. We'd have minus 1 over x squared. And you can see for any value of x, the gradient here is always negative. And here, and it never equals naught. For a very large x, it's going to start to flatten out, isn't it? Because this would tend to zero. But it remains negative, so that's why you're shooting down here and shooting down there. So that was quite helpful to confirm that there weren't any turning points and the fact that it was this sort of shape. So that's that curve then done. Let's have a, look, a brief look at the other ones then. We won't spend quite so much time on the next ones. We'll have a little look at them. 1 over x minus 3. Well, here, rather than the asymptote being at naught, the bot denominator equals naught when x is 3. So at that point, the function is not defined. So here's our vertical asymptote. And it's in its uh, characteristic shape, it's very similar to the 1 over x. Just above 3, say 3.1, you'll get 0.1 underneath, and the fraction is 1 over 0.1, which is 10. 
So again, it shoots up there. Just below 3 at 2.9, you'll get minus 0 0.1, and that fraction will calculate to minus uh, 10. So again, it just shoots up here. Now what's helpful here is when we put x as 0 in, that's an easy value, so we would also use part 3 here, put x as 0 in, easy to get, and we get minus a third. So there's a value that the graph uh, sketch goes through. Now when x gets large positive, again this is still large positive, and so the fraction is small positive. And when x is large negative, this denominator is large negative, making the fraction small negative, isn't it? So if you put minus 1,000 in, you'll get minus 1,003. 1 over 1,003 is really small, and the negative sign makes it small negative. So again, here's the sketch then. It comes up, goes through minus a third, and starts to tend towards the x-axis that way. And here it comes down, and like so. And there's no real point in getting the turning point. There aren't any turning points, and there's no real point in differentiating it if you don't if you're, if you're happy with this sketch. So that's that one. Now let's have a little look at the next one then. Um, and that's something that looks like this. Now oftentimes you'll see a polynomial over another polynomial which you need to do division on. There's a little, little widget tool which will help you do the division if you need it, to use it. But basically, once you've done a uh, division of polynomials, you, you might get something that looks like this in, in its form. So what happens here then? Well, there's a few things that are happening. The first thing to say is when x gets large, positive or negative, this number underneath here gets large, doesn't it? And so the fraction is really small, be it positive or negative. So in comparison to this value, this value is very, very small. So this is going to be an asymptote for large values of x. 3x minus 1 is a curve. There's minus 1, say, and we draw our uh, straight line as an asymptote. And we just said for large values of x, be they positive or negative, the y values will get approximately close to this line here, y equals 3x minus 1. Now, does it tend to above or below? Well, if we put large positive in here, say 1,000, we'll get 1,002. 1 over 1,002 is really, really small, but positive. So we're adding on. So we're just above the line here and tending to it. On the negative side, if we put minus 1,000 in, for example, this would be negative, large. The fraction would be uh, negative, small, wouldn't it? So we're taking something away. So we're just underneath here. So we'd come away like that. Now, another. so that's what happens here. The other asymptote happens when x is minus 2. So I'm going to mark off minus 2 here and draw the asymptote. Now you'll notice I've put the scale like that because simply because it enables me to start to draw this um, in the curve uh, more easily. And it's So when x is naught, then, we've got minus 1 plus a half is minus a half. So it's going to come down here. When x is naught, it's another value we could put in. Minus 1 plus a half is minus a half. So it's going to come down to minus a half. So it's going to come down here. So the scale's not great, is it, really? I should have put minus 2 over here. So I would redraw this normally so that I give myself a bit more room and move it up so I can sketch it. The other thing we haven't done, we've marked off this point. We've marked off this and these uh, characteristics of the curve. Now we need to look at either side of, of minus 2. Just above minus 2 then. Just above minus 2, say minus 1.9, this would be small positive. This fraction then would be large positive. So it's going to be up here somewhere, isn't it? And then, say at minus 2.1, just underneath 2, minus 2, minus 2.1, we'll get large negative. So it'll be down here. So the curve comes up from here, turns, and there's a max from there. And it's going to come down here. Now it's going to turn. Now we don't know whether it turns before, on, or after as the minimum. But characteristically speaking, it's just going to turn somewhere around here and then, whoops, go back up there. So apologies for the actual attempt at drawing that, but that's basically the essence of that curve. It might be of some value here to work out the actual uh, max and mins. So let's have a go at that to see if we can work out a turning point here to see where whether either side of um, the zero point it was. So here, if we differentiate this thing here, we'd get 3. 
this would be something to the minus one, wouldn't it? So we'd get minus uh, one would be there. X plus two squared times this something differentiated, which is one. Let that equal naught. So we'd see that, and then we can move the X plus two squared across the equals. So we move this object over there and then move the X plus two squared up. Or should I just write it like this? One over X plus two squared equals three. Now move this up. I'll quickly do this and then move the 3 down and read from right to left. So you get that. Square root x plus 2. So you can see it is a bit of a palaver and you get plus minus 1 over 3. And then you can work out the roots here. The two turning points as we said remember either side of uh, minus 2 and it's that much either side of minus 2. So you could actually determine then from the sketch uh, where that minimum and you could draw in the maximum value as well. Okay then, so I just thought I'd go through a few little things for this uh, section. Uh, all the best with it, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers!